also in your uh, gut, then you those microflora can literally get rid of that uh, mercury. They are alchemists. They can turn uh, one element into another element. Like if you don't, don't have enough calcium, they can take silica or magnesium and make calcium for you. Wow. The list just goes on and on. They're so critical. And then, of course, we now know that... Um, some of the most important neurotransmitters or brain chemicals are manufactured in the gut. Serotonin is. And serotonin is the one the brain chemical that, first of all, serotonin grows more brain cells. So we need it for that reason. We feel happy when we're, we have adequate levels of serotonin. And uh, serotonin actually grows more brain cells in the gut brain. We have this wonderful brain in our gut. And everybody's real aware we have one in our skull, but we have it's huge, important brain in our in our gut, in our in our abdominal re- region, I call the enteric nervous system, and we have to take care of that brain, feed that brain, nourish that brain, and living inside this uh, is this world, this wonderful world of beneficial mi- microflora that um, you know that just do all these important things for us. So I think that's one of the most important things that body ecology does. Uh, we bring an uh, amazing body of information. You know, it's, it's so amazing to me because there are a lot of, so, there's everything I teach, there's science behind it. But uh-huh. it's like all this research is being done by brilliant scientists around the world, but they just report on it and there it hangs. So what I've tried to do constantly is connect all those dots, tie those important pieces of information together so we have something really useful that can help people heal, help people stay younger, end a lot of the suffering that's in the world right now. We have never, never, never been so sick. And the information we have will begin to get people well immediately. Everybody benefits. We have no, uh, if you start in the diet and you do it, uh, if you come to our way of life, you will absolutely positively begin to change your life and your health and your emotional health and everything for the, your, your brain, your thoughts, everything for the, for the better. Wow. And we have a lot of uh, well-known people around the world who are very, um, I'm not going to say their names, I'm going to let them come out and say their names, right. but some wonderful people who are very intelligent, highly respected in the world, and some famous celebrities who live and breathe by the body project way of life. But um, it's really autistic children that benefit. I mean, everybody benefits from this diet. It's a great way of life. Okay. Yeah, I'm convinced after reading this book, it just is. It, it, you went into such great detail about that. But and now, one of the things I wanted to talk the next few minutes about is uh, food combining. And that's one of the seven principles too. Yeah, yeah and it's uh, something as simple as as eating a sandwich, which most uh, the Western diet, you know, with with bread and, and meat or steak and potatoes. That's just breaking one of these uh, one of these principles and. What happens when we eat that way? Well, um, you know, by the way, this principle is not new to, to me. I mean, I didn't come up with this at all. Um, uh-huh. The seven principles, as I said, are really very universal principles. And this particular one teaches us to, well, I, I probably the better, a better way to say that is that when we eat food, we can't be eating these extremely complex poorly combined meals like we've been eating. Uh, The digestive tract can't handle that. And as we get older and we lose even more of our digestive fire, digestive power, it's even more uh, important to properly combine your foods. But yes, you know, we, food until just recently was difficult to obtain. And and so people would eat anything they could, and they were pretty hardy, sort of. I mean, they didn't live that long back in the days of Thomas Jefferson. The average age was only 45 years old. Wow. Um, he lived a long time, by the way, because he didn't eat much. He practiced, um, probably practiced a lot of food combining unknowingly because he ate mostly vegetables and plants, and they all combined with each other. Okay. But it's, um, it's kind of in a nutshell, the food combining rule is that you, if you're going to eat, eat meat. I mean, excuse me, if you're going to eat, fruit, uh-huh. you would eat it alone on an empty stomach because it digests very quickly. And if you put it in a meal with, say, meat and potato or bread or something, you're going to have uh, toast for breakfast, orange juice toast, for example. You're going to have terrible gas and bloating because 
the uh, fruit is going to stay in there for, and it needs to just pass quickly on through out of the stomach and on down. It's going to um, be kind of bound up in all that bread, which will be there for about three hours, and then you, you have a mess, beginning of a mess going on. Uh -huh. As far as um, animal protein foods like fish, chicken, steak, and so on, um, those foods uh, combine best with just vegetables. Now, one of the things that we're very, very big on are fermented foods. We are really kind of the leaders in fermented food and nutrition. Yeah. And we, um, so we recommend that people have fermented vegetables with, we call them cultured vegetables, with a meal. And that's the best combination of all. And so people that don't, for people that don't know, that'd be like sauerkraut would be an example. Yeah, I don't use that term sauerkraut because... Um, the way sauerkraut is available to us today is you go in the store, it's in a glass jar, it's got vinegar and yeah. a lot of salt and it's pasteurized. I'm talking about vegetables that have been shredded up. We add, we have a special way of making them where we add um, even more bacteria. You know, there's naturally present, bacteria present on the vegetables anyway, but we add even more. And a little bit of salt and then pack them real tightly in a jar. And then they are sit there for about a week and ferment. And they're so good for you. They're sour tasting, so they bring that sour taste to the meal and they really make a huge difference in, in how you digest animal protein. It's growing your own probiotics essentially, right? Say, I'm say, sorry again. If say you're, again. you're growing your own probiotics essentially, right? Definitely. Yeah. And not only, I'm really glad you said that because we can go into health food stores and you can buy jars of probiotics, but they're not as strong as the ones that grow on vegetables and, and on uh, some of the other foods that we recommend, like we recommend fermenting the juice of young coconut water, you know, the water that you'll find in, in the young coconut, yeah. fermenting that. It's very rich in sugar. It's a quite a popular food among the raw food community, but uh, it's got tons of sugar in it. It'll age you so fast to drink that. So we, we ferment it. It's a great medium for fermenting and put other kinds of bacteria in there, and then people drink that. That's like a miraculous food. Uh, and you can have some of that with your meal. Or we have some other probiotic liquids we recommend putting in a pretty champ uh, champagne or wine glass and serving that with your meal instead of wine, which is alcohol and very dehydrating, very aging. Uh, we try to take everything that people know and love and give them a much better substitute. But the vegetables on the diet are veg vegetables from the land, vegetables from the ocean, and these fermented vegetables. So if you're having meat or fish or whatever, you would not have um, potatoes or rice or a piece of bread with it, a hamburger. Uh -huh. um, cheese is the protein. You wouldn't have it on a pizza dough crust, you know, with tomatoes, which are a fruit, by the way. Okay. So, um, so food combining makes a big difference. I've had people over the years say to me, wow, I learned the food combining. I decided to do that. That really made a difference to me. Um, it also is one of the most important secrets for anti-aging because you're not using up your metabolic enzymes. You're taking a, a lot of burden off the digestive tract and you're not using up as many enzymes. So you'll that age as quickly. I've, I've, I've seen people look 20 years younger just because they um, have been doing food combining a, a good number of years, like 5, 10, yeah. 20 years. Amazing difference. Wow. So, yes, that's, that's an important. They're all important. All seven principles are important. Right. Yeah. Well, we don't have time to cover them all. We're we're getting toward the end here, but um, thank you for sharing that. Hopefully, people will go out and um, get the book. I'll show it here again. Um. Well, can I mention to you, Russ, that yes. we have? Um, I was going to bring that up. <laughs> starting up workshops and uh, in the Los Angeles area, we'll, we'll be giving them on a regular basis, and I'd love for people to go to the website and learn about the workshops. We're doing a lot of teleseminars too. Okay. Um, starting very shortly, and also um, have a new book coming out. And the new book is on anti-aging. Anti okay. And not to get old fast, much, live much, much longer. We really, it's ridiculous how early we're aging. We, we're not supposed to be growing old so fast. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I can't wait for that book. And, and what's your website? How do people get a hold of you? It's just bodyecology.com. Okay, and I'll post that right here on the screen for everybody. Um, Thank you, Donna, very, very much, and I appreciate it, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks, Russ.